Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on um, the for loop, uh, trying to explain it, give you some ways in which it can get broken and, and you can have trouble with it. Um, I'm basically working through um, live action, much of the same material that's on page 140 uh, in our headfirst um, JavaScript book. The section that's called butt weight, there's a better way to iter iterate over an array. So um, you may want to grab that page of the book and follow along, but it's not required in order to understand what I'm about to go through. So I um, am starting as the book does with a while loop, which is a much simpler and more basic loop structure. Uh, computer scientists are, um, they don't agree on which loop structure people should learn. I have a COSI 1030 book which um, is supposed to be a first book for programming and it never um, it pretends the for loop doesn't exist it focuses entirely on the while loop which is both more basic and more versatile but um, because head first javascript moves us forward in our programming practice very rapidly and we go in the same chapter we introduce loops and arrays they go straight to for loops simply because Hands down, for loops are the easiest way to create looping structures that work well with arrays. So um, I've got this for loop, I've got this while loop code here. I'm going to run it. And as I often do, I'm going to bring the output up to be next to my code and hide away this window. So I basically have um, two log statements to show you where the code starts and ends. And then the, and then a while loop structure is pretty straightforward. You always have to initialize your counter. You have to have a while condition that says when the loop is going to stop. And basically this loop stops as soon as the counter hits the value 10. It continues to run up until counter ends up 10. Inside the loop, you do something. Um, in this case, we only do one thing, which is log the value of the counter. Um, but you can often have quite long and complex code in here. And then the very last thing you do is increment the counter by adding, by setting this counter equal to counter plus one. Note that this can be written counter plus plus. That's a shorthand for what I had. Um, and the book in its let's talk about your verbosity um, sections often acts as if one of these is better than the other. I actually think that for um, starting students, you're really better off just writing counter equals counter plus one. But if you like the abbreviation and you understand what it's doing, feel free to use it. Now again, if I run this code, and wait for it to run, I get the line of output before the loop starts, I get the line of loop line after, and then I see that the counter runs from zero, which is its initial value, to nine, and I don't get a line of output when counter equals 10, which is exactly how you iterate 10 times. Remember, we always start counting as, at zero as programmers. Um, and that seems perfectly easy. Uh, and, you know, not necessarily you need something else to do this work. However, it's, um, if there is a lot of code in the body of the loop, it's super easy to just simply forget to do that line. And if you do that line, your code goes into an infinite loop. And let me just show you the infinite loop. Because your counter starts at zero, and if you're never incrementing it, it never becomes anything else. And so basically, this code is just going to keep running, and I'm never going to hit that line after. Luckily, um, unlike in a, in a web page, I've got a stop button here. So I can kill that infinite loop. And it stops running, but I, again, it stops running before I ever see this. So um, with a while loop, you have, to, you have to remember to put a, a specific line at the bottom of the loop. I'm going to control Z that back into greatness. 
just prove that my code is running again correctly. Okay, and so now I have working code because I'm remembering to put this line at the bottom. Now the other thing that you can forget to do in more complicated code is you can simply forget to initialize your counter. And depending on which language you're working in, this can have more or less catastrophic results. In, um, in JavaScript, the results aren't catastrophic, but if you don't have the console logging lines I have before and after, the results can be kind of confusing. So if I run this file now, what I see is I get the line before the loop starts and the line after the loop ends. And in fact, because counter is undefined, it never really succeeds in passing this while condition and getting into this, um, into the body of the loop. So um, how this can be so confusing is that if you don't have console logging lines before and after it, um, as you often won't when you are trying to do a lot of different things in code and you run this file, it runs and absolutely nothing happens over here. So you, so you just simply have nothing happening, which is always very hard to understand. Um, now, if I just put everything back again, I get back to my working loop. So the while loop in some, in some um, form, it you know, exists in all programming languages, all um, virtually all programming languages. Um, and it's more basic and it came first. But um, one of the things that people figured out is that since you always have to initialize your counter and you always have to have a condition for when the loop is going to stop and you always have to have something that increments the counter if you're doing this kind of loop versus some other kind of loop, that it would make sense to create um, a different construct where you can get all that bookkeeping out of the way at the beginning. And I'm gonna change the comment statements here. And I'm gonna change this while loop into a for loop. So, a for loop has three parts. To help distinguish the output from the while loop, between the while loop and the for loop, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take this down here, get rid of that and put it in here. Okay, and keep this and then actually pick this up Okay, and that's really all a for loop does is it sets up, it initializes the counter, it tests the counter, and it increments the counter. And I've got a red X because I have a semicolon there. Now I'm gonna run this once just like this, and I believe it's all gonna work. Let's give that a shot. So you should see two identical sets of output and the only difference is that the labels before and after are different. Now, um, if you write this line correctly, then everything else about a for loop is simpler than a while loop. But really, this is a devilishly complicated little construct here. And there are a lot of things um, that we do by convention to help us make this simpler and easier to see whether it's right or wrong. And the most basic one is that instead of having a, usually, instead of having a semantically meaningful variable in here, the convention is to use a single letter. We normally try to have our variable names meaningful, but in for loops, the convention, not the requirement, is to use single letters and, and you generally start with I for index.
So if I change all these counters to I, and I call this index, because that's what I stands for, then if I got that right, um, I should be able to run that, get pretty close to the same output. And I have a for loop that looks much more like you'll see for loop examples. Now, there are a couple of other things. Um, it is also conventional in, um, it is also conventional in for loops to shorten this to I plus plus. Um, which, running it again one more time, be patient, works exactly the same way because again, I plus plus is a shorthand for that whole equation that um, I just had in there. I'm going to control Z that back. Okay. Now, I plus plus is a shorthand for all of this where you add one to I and then you assign it back into I. What is not a shorthand for, um, for th this i equals i plus 1, but I've seen students do, is I've seen students shorten that to this, which does not change the value of i. And that gives you an infinite loop, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So what happens here is you're sort of adding one to i and tossing the results on the floor because you're not assigning it back into i. So let me use my magic stop button over here. I'm going to change this to the conventional i++. That's what you'll see in all your examples. Sometimes you'll see the plus plus in front. More often you'll see it after. And um, this is one of the few places where I'd recommend going ahead and, and using the shortened version. But if you wanted to have this be i equals i plus 1, you won't get any argument from me.